these are four quick little snippets, and I probably won't even play them completely because I don't want to spend too much time. Um, but these are the four styles of video that we sort of say this is the this is the baby steps beginner sort of ideas that we present when we talk to a firm when they've not touched video before. So one is a company wide profile. So you know, tell me the story of the firm. If it's, we do this a lot for firms that have been around for 20 years, 10 years, 50 years, right? We've been around for a really long time. What also happens is firms will, um, you know, after a period of time, maybe the people who started the firm are retiring and there's a new group of people that are taking over. So it's a way to illustrate the transition that could be happening. That happens quite frequently, right? Um, tell us the culture. Tell us the, the sort of range of work that you do. This is a lot of... Um, a lot of sort of like talking heads, right? Interviewees in there sort of explaining. Um, the next would be the port portfolio segment showcase. So um, here's my really amazing residential work. I'm just gonna show you one single column of my work, one, of, you know, one segment of my portfolio. Here is a, an array of my beautiful residential work, right? You could do the same thing for, you know, name it, name the building type. So that's another product. Um, third is, the most probably traditional is the sort of legacy project. I've got one project that we know is amazing. We love it. It's going to be phenomenal. Let's start documenting it. Let's make this into a short film. You could have people talking in it, or it could be just simple, no, no narration. You could just have beautiful cinematography and maybe text popping in. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. And then the last is a, is a series um, which is a way to sort of think about um, breaking apart a collection of similar storylines, right? So similar st structures of, of content. So maybe, um, and you know, you can mix these up. So the portfolio segment could then be broken up and then some of the shit film, some of the projects that you showed in the, seg the portfolio segment could then have their own individual project that fits into a series. So, you know, this is, you know, all connects together. So I'm gonna jump into these. We've had a great experience working with CLR Design. The, the most um, important aspect of our relationship with CLR is ability to come to the table and Client. allow for a, a, an aggressive design process to take place. And it's because CLR is extremely talented at conceiving of and executing zoo exhibit. CLR Design has been in the zoo and animal exhibit design since the middle 80s. And we're very strong believers that we've got a legacy to carry on. So it's important for us to continue the same solid thinking that helped establish the firm. You know, we started with just a handful of folks back then, and now, you know, we're over over 25 professionals just focused on zoo design. We think, you know, like exhibit designers, we just don't think like architects or landscape architects. We've kind of created our own niche as exhibit designers. That's what's fascinating, you know, about our job. The range is absolutely amazing. We can, it can range from a little mole rat to a, to a biggest land animal on earth. It's what makes the work exciting to be able to, um, for each client, do something really unique. All right. So that product, right, we took sort of the three new heads of the firm, weaved in their commentary and their interviews, brought one of their clients in. There's the film, it, this is actually, it turns into a nine minute piece that they, uh, they made kind of longer than what we traditionally do. Um, but it weaves in, it then gets into showing, you know, uh, cinematography of their actual work. It has a couple more clients. It actually has users that use some of the space. So it's a, it's a very comprehensive, um, overarching uh, story of, of the firm, of CLR. So next, portfolio segment. As our clients grew our business in two, we ended up following them around the globe uh, that their business model started to influence our business model and how we approach design, how we approach workplace. Uh, and those partnerships still flourish today. One of the key things that we learned very early was to be very careful listeners. We've learned a lot from our clients. Uh, it's migrated into the way we work and allowed us to serve a much broader set of clients. We wanted to understand what a, what a client's needs were, how we could develop an environment that was a strategic tool for them, allowed them to be more productive, allow them a better quality of life, and also create a tool that becomes a competitive advantage for them. So this is studios talking about you know their corporate office style architecture, and it goes in and then shows you a handful of, of the projects and buildings. Um, you know most of that segment there was a lot of still images in there, right? There was a lot of still photography. So you can 
I mean, we tell our clients oftentimes the best image you're going to get is still the photograph. The photograph is still most likely going to be the best image because the photographer is there to get a handful of images, right? When we go out on site with video production, we're bringing multiple times the amount of equipment that a photographer is bringing on site, right? There's like rigging, there's dollies, there's all kinds of stuff. There's certain motion things. There's tons and tons of equipment that are bringing on site, which is why video costs a lot, right? Photographers that go out on site and they usually are shooting sunrise, sunset shots. They're getting a handful of select images and then traditionally they're done, right? So use the photos, still have photographs, still get those photographs, but use them in the video. You don't need to overlap them and compete. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll stop there. Eventually it'll just all be the same thing, right? I mean, the video is gonna get high enough resolution that we're just gonna be pulling stills from video. So, you know, photographers are coming into our world because they're, they're scared and they're freaked out because photography is, is you know, it's being squeezed. Um, and more and more people are moving into video. Um, and photographers usually can't light that well, human faces or interior spaces that well, um, for video that's not, that's continuous shots. Um, and they usually can't do sound that well. So it's, you know, but they're, they're coming in, and, you know, we're, we work with a lot of architectural photographers to collaborate with them because they, you know, they have a great eye. Um, next example, legacy project. There's no narration in this, in this example. This is just a, a quick little vignette of the expansion that just happened down at the Kimball like a little over a year ago. So, um, quick shot, very, very, you know, we shot that over two days on site. Um, very quick production. And then this is, this is a series, this is a series that we've done for the, for the High Line where we actually highlight some of their volunteers. So it's actually some of the people that, um, the, the premise of the series is my Highline, so it's, they sort of say what the Highline is to them, which is a great way to showcase the people that use the Highline. So instead of doing a video where the Highline, you know, the leaders of the Highline talk about, the Highline means this to us as the people that made the Highline, why don't you use the people that use the space to tell your story? Because they're gonna have a totally different perspective, right? And this is, um, just, I'll show it to you and you can get a feel for what, what that can mean for for the organization, for the Highline. I love being in New York City. I think it's the only city. But I also love the natural world. I was lucky enough to be a kid whose parents liked gardening. We all had to garden when we were little kids, so we each had a little plot of land. That was my growing up experience with gardening. And that led to the work that I do as an artist which is very much involved in the natural world. And that drew me to the high line. Exciting to get back, and um, it's an amazing group effort. 
and it allows me to use what I know for a greater cause. My name is Gammy Miller. This is my highline. All right, so series, right? So why don't you let the users tell the story because they've got a better story than sort of the top-down design process.